friends, it's The Stitches. Today I'm going to show you how I made this messenger bag. In 2023, I received a ton of fabrics from another stitcher who was getting rid of their stash, which means I am on a fabric shopping ban until I can make a sizable dent in my own stash. I've also decided that in 2024, I'm going to mostly be focusing on making basics. So for my first project of the year, I made this sleek little bag that is not only versatile, but something I can actually use in my day-to-day -day life. As with any other project, I started with a design idea. I drew out the basic features that I wanted my bag to have, how many pockets and where, what shape I wanted the finished bag to be, etc. Then I made a pattern based off of my sketch. This video is really intended to be more of a vlog than a tutorial, so I won't go into detail about how I made the pattern, but essentially I started with the shape of my outer bag and then added or subtracted inches at the top to create the flap and the inner pouch, pockets, you get the idea. As far as patterning goes, it was a fairly intuitive process. Of course, anytime you make a new pattern, you have to test it. I made a mock-up using repurposed muslin. I've said this before, but anytime I make a mock-up, I take it apart when I'm done with it so that I can use the muslin over and over again. For my outer bag fabric, I used this lightweight canvas from my stash. It was originally this very pale yellow, but I don't really wear yellow, so it did not stay this color. I used a couple different fabrics for this project, one for the outer bag and one for the lining. So from the canvas, I only cut the outer bag pieces. My pattern doesn't have seam allowance built in, so I added a half inch to the outer edge. Then I surged my pieces to prepare them for dyeing. My bag will have pockets on the front and back, so I cut those pieces on a fold and then surged them as is, so that they will behave as one single layer of fabric. Although, in hindsight, the outer pockets would have benefited from some light interfacing. Once my pieces were prepped, I dyed them black. While I was waiting for the fabric to finish washing and drying after the dye bath, I cut my lining out of some basic medium weight regular cotton fabric. I was pleasantly surprised by how well the canvas took the dye. This is it compared to the cotton lining after the first dye bath. Dyeing fabric black is almost never achieved after a single bath. I wanted to make my canvas just a little bit darker though, so I dyed it a second time. After that, the canvas was the correct color at last, so I carefully remarked the stitching line on these pieces with a chalk pencil. Now that I have all of my fabric pieces cut, dyed, and surged, it's time to cut my interfacing pieces. For the outer canvas pieces, I'll be using this ultra-firm fusible stabilizer. I've used this in a couple of projects in the past, and I'll have a link to where you can purchase it for yourself in the description. As cool as it would be to have a Pellin sponsorship, I do not. I just find their products really useful. I cut my interfacing pieces without any seam allowance, because if they did have seam allowance, then there would have been an ungodly amount of bulk in the seams when I went to press them. The lining pieces are fused with basic lightweight interfacing, just about anything will work for them. These are all of my interface pieces, so now I'm ready to actually start assembling them. I started with the easiest and smallest piece, which was a self-lined square that will eventually become a pocket on the inside of the bag. This is essentially just a rectangle that was folded in on itself, right sides together, and then stitched down with just a small opening for turning. To help with getting the perfect, crisp square of fabric, I used a corner press, and then while ironing it flat, I used a 50-50 mix of distilled white vinegar and distilled water in a spray bottle. 
If you didn't already know, a 50-50 vinegar mix removes wrinkles and smooths fabric like a dream. Distilled water by itself is still pretty effective, but vinegar and water together even more so. And I wanted this project to be extra crisp, so I used this mixture with the iron quite a bit. It's also important to use distilled water for this, that way you don't get as much buildup on the iron plate. Once the square pocket piece was turned and pressed, I hand stitched the opening closed. Then, I pinned the pocket to one of my inner lining pieces. And while I was at it, I pinned the outer pocket pieces to my outer bag pieces. All three of these were taken over to the sewing machine where I stitched the pockets to the corresponding bag pieces. My goal here is to assemble all of the individual parts before I assemble the final bag. So my next step is to grab a zipper and construct the inner zipper pouch. The inside of my bag will have a zipper pouch that divides the inside cavity into two distinct compartments, which is a pretty common feature for this style of messenger bag. My zipper pouch is made up of four pieces of lining fabric that are the same shape as the rest of the main body pieces, just a little bit shorter. I sandwiched one side of the zipper between two of these pieces with the teeth pointing down towards the bottom curve. The fabric pieces are also right sides together. Then I took this assemblage over to the machine and stitched it. I didn't film myself flipping and pressing the lining pieces, but I did. And then I top stitched right below the zipper teeth so that the teeth are just poking out of the top of the lining fabric. I also basted the two lining pieces together so that they act like one single piece of fabric. And then this whole process is repeated on the other side of the zipper. So here is what both sides of the zipper installation look like together. The whole thing is folded along the top and then the two sides are stitched together along the outer edge. This results in a finished zipper pouch. Next, I started to assemble the flap that folds across the top of the messenger bag, and I even got partway through stitching the outer and lining pieces together before I remembered that I wanted to use magnetic closures and I needed to install the top of those closures into the flap lining first. So I picked out the stitching line that I made and marked where I needed to install the magnetic closure pieces. And I used a little folded over square of scrap lining fabric to add some stability. Now I can actually stitch my flat pieces right sides together, leaving an opening for turning. I clipped notches out of the seam allowance at the curves and trimmed the corners to remove bulk before turning and pressing the flap right side out. And I hand stitched the opening to close it up as well. And now I have a finished flat piece. 
Then I added the bottom half pieces of the magnetic closures to one of my outer bag pieces. The backing is tucked between the pocket and the body of the bag, so it's not perfectly hidden, but it works, and you can't see it unless you look directly into the pocket. For these I also added in a little bit of scrap fabric for stability, but for these particular pieces I surged around the edges so there wasn't any raw edges that would fray on the inside of the bag. At this point, I was almost ready to assemble the bag, but first, let's cut to a quick commercial break. And we're back! The next step is to stitch together the bottom pieces of my bag. These pieces are long rectangles that are stitched right sides together along one of the short edges. and then I pressed open the seam allowance at the ironing table. The outer canvas is all one piece, but the inner lining cotton is made up of two pieces, since the inside of the bag is separated into two compartments by the zipper pouch. So the lining needs to be separated into two pieces as well, so that the pouch can sit in between them. Then I pinned together my outer bag pieces, and my inner bag lining pieces, making sure that the seam on the bottom of the bag is aligned with the center point of each of my bag body pieces. And this is what both parts of the bag look like before they're stitched. Stitching the lining wasn't too much of a challenge, but stitching up the outer bag was deeply frustrating due to how structured it was. It just physically didn't fit under the machine arm without carefully manipulating it. Next, I pulled out my adjustable strap hardware that I already had plenty of in my stash. The only things I had to buy for this project were the zipper for the inner bag and the cotton webbing that the shoulder strap is made out of. I actually had to dye this black as well because my local fabric shop was out of black cotton webbing, so I had to buy it in gray. As for constructing the shoulder strap, I followed the same tutorial that I used for my plush animal bag video. I'll have that tutorial linked in the description. I've only made bag straps like this a couple of times, so it's not something that I just intuitively know how to do yet. I also attached a tiny little D-ring to a strap made from scrap lining that I'll use to make a spot on the front of the bag that I can hang my keys on. Then I pinned the adjustable strap and the key hang to the outer body of the bag with the raw edge facing upwards. The right side of the strap should be the side that touches the bag. Eventually, the raw edge will be flipped up into the top seam. I took this over to the machine and stitched the strap and key hang in place. At the ironing table, I folded in the seam allowance on the outer bag and pressed it. My new sleeve board was really helpful here. And then I tucked the lining into the outer bag wrong sides together, and then folded the seam allowance down and pressed it on the lining as well, so that the allowances were sandwiched between the outer bag fabric and the lining fabric. Since I knew there was absolutely no hope that my machine would be able to handle this seam, I hand-stitched it with a ladder stitch instead. This was time-consuming, but ultimately worth it. The bag is so close to being done, all it needs is to have the top flap attached to it. 
I tried to stitch it on using my machine, but it let me know in no uncertain terms that it was not up to the task. After several attempts, I admitted defeat and stitched it on by hand as well. I used two rows of stitching, one along the back of the bag and one along the inside so that the flap is sturdy and neat. And so now, finally, the bag is complete. The finished messenger bag is exactly what I was envisioning. Adjustable shoulder strap, magnetic closures, front and back pockets, two distinct inner compartments separated by a zipper pouch, and even a small pocket on the inside of the back of the bag, close to the body. I was so excited to complete this project that I couldn't even wait to finish filming this video before I started using it, so if you see a stray cat hair or two, no you didn't. Many months ago, in my last sewing vlog, I said I wanted to make some bigger, flashier projects, but to be honest, when I was going through my wardrobe at the end of 2023, I realized that I didn't have, like, any casual basics. I have plenty of over-the-top statement pieces, but most of my basics are either worn out or ill-fitting. I've also just really wanted to slow down the rate at which I acquire clothing, not just by shopping, but also by sewing. I could honestly make a whole video about my thought process here, but I'll wrap it up. Essentially, for a good chunk of 2024, I'm going to focus on creating a good, concrete base for my wardrobe, so that I'm not just filling my space with clothes that I can really only wear a couple times a year. Meanwhile, in my day-to-day, -day, I'm just cycling through the same, like, five outfits over and over again. But that's all for today. I hope this was entertaining, relaxing, inspiring, insert your favorite adjective here, and with that, I'll see you all next time. Bye!